So I'm uh, headed out today to go set up a new property at uh, I think roughly eight, 850 acres or a thousand acres. Um, it sits on the outskirts of a uh, town, so it should be a good dispersal route. Um, but the the property owner was stating that he's been having some issues with some coyotes and he's wanting to get them taken care of before um, turkey season came in, spring turkey season came in. So. Um, I put out some, you know, content online and uh, just through word of mouth, I guess they, uh, you know, saw my videos and and uh, got a hold of me and we went out and looked at it last week and I just kind of uh, scouted it. I knew that it was going to be pretty rainy still, so I wanted to hold off at least till this weekend. Um, have a good weekend to set it up. Um, so it should have a good, nice Saturday and. Uh, tomorrow, so ho hopefully I can, you know, set in some weatherproof sets and um, pick up a few uh, canine for him, and hopefully uh, help out his uh, deer and turkey population. But the property has a lake on it and three ponds, so it's got crop field. It's got uh, you know a bunch of draws coming down out of the woods, tree lines, and uh, you know waterways grass strips it, it's a nice it's a nice looking property I, I'm, I'm pretty excited to actually get out and uh, set some traps on it so I have uh, been getting my traps ready um, on a previous video of mine I was uh, getting those Duke number twos and the Bridger number twos ready uh, modifying them so after that all I did was um, I uh, degreased them I just um, put them in uh, the dishwasher at the house took the grease off of them real quick and then uh, the following the following morning I set up the wax and got the got the wax mounted down and got it ready and uh, ended up waxing some traps and um, so I've got I'm taking 30 traps with me um, I don't know if I'll set them all maybe I'll set more but got a few snares as well might try and hang some snares I don't really like to use snares but there was a quite a few um, fence openings and holes in the fence I think you know could probably pick up one or two maybe so we'll just kind of see how it works out but uh, you know it's should be a fun day so I'll keep you guys posted and um, you know we'll see we'll see how We'll see how this does, and you know, hopefully we'll get some action on uh, on, on footage. And, uh, maybe I'll show a video or, or two of me setting a few sets and put the drone up in the air and fly it around. So stay with me, guys. Setting up the property. Just kind of showing you a little lay of the land. I'm in this waterway right now. All these little, you know, fingers are starting to come together. All the spokes are starting to meet at the intersection. Now they're coming down from that way. So I have a pipe set right here. And then across the way, it's got this uh, big showy set. At another spot, there's a tree line cutting across this uh, crop field going up this hill um, with a two track cutting down through it. So I put in a bank set, big showy set over here. Uh, the wind's uh, blowing towards me right now, so it's blowing in my face. And then up this way, I found some scat, a couple piles of scat, and then I just put in a uh, pipe set right here. Okay, this is just another um, view from the drone, just showing you um, where that tree line cuts through the, the two fields. So, little ditch waterway running through. Um, up on the right, you'll see that there was a um, bank type dirt hole set 
Um, and then where the buggy is at, you'll see that there was, um, that's where the pipe set is placed. We'll just kind of walk you through, um, you know, just this standard trench set that I usually make. Um, I'd been making it with a um, groundhog tool, but it had broke. So I decided to, you know, pull the trigger and start using the auger. And I'm very, very happy that I did. I, I don't think I'll be looking back after using the auger. It's, um, man, it's been a great, uh, it's been a great tool for, for my trapping. Um, I actually have bought three drills now, so um, I did have one break on me, but um, ended up getting a couple other drills just to be on the safe side. I um, like to try and go as deep as I can with uh, the auger, and um, that way kind of makes them, you know, want to work a little bit harder to get the, the bait or whatever is in the hole. Um, so I usually do that, and then I usually do a little V-shape. Um, Sometimes I, you know, V-shape out with the trowel, but I've kind of got used to just being able to do it. So I, um, you know, take the sod buster and just start going straight back, um, kind of in a V-like angle. I'll try and leave a lip um, right at the edge of the hole so um, it protects my, um, my lever that's facing the hole. So there's that lip right there. Uh, just to kind of make sure that I've got it wide enough for my trap to sit in and then I usually dig out a little bowl shape that way my um, center swivel and everything can um, bed nicely down in there um, these are just uh, simple disposable stakes uh, Berkshire disposables I usually just cut them off leave them in the ground or um, just um, open up the J-hook and take them out if I want to reuse them but that stake driver that I'm using, uh, it's just a pry bar. You can buy it off of Amazon. I think for $23, it's 20 inches long. Um, haven't had any issues with it. I bought two of them, but you know, um, I think I've had it for two years. So I've never had to use the second one I've bought. Um, but this is a number two bridger that I'd modified with the uh, pit pan and the rod style dog. Um, I'll just kind of start bedding it in and it you know beds pretty nice in there I like the bed and uh, pack around the loose jaws as I'm holding pressure on the trap um, so you want to make sure you know there's no tip and wobble that's a no-brainer um, and then I like to use peat moss I use peat moss as a kind of like a pan cover um, and you know for the freeze proof um, qualities that it possesses but I'll just um, kind of un uncover the pan and then uh, make sure I pack in good around the trap. Um, take some of that loose soil and just kind of blend and cover everything up. Um, so I like to make sure I pack it down and then kind of give it a little top coat. When guiding, I usually guide around the, um, the dog and then um, to the left of the um, loose jaw up where it kind of angles down towards the lever um, but so this is um, pretty much what it looks like finished I'll show you just a little bit of bait and lure that I use I, I use a commercial bait um, it's like a Bill Nelson bait formula and um, works really well for me like to just put a you know a heaping glob down in the hole push it down as far as I can um, the way I angle my holes the bait tends to um, roll down but I try to smear as much as I can on the inside wall um, and then I just take some uh, gland lure because this is um, a breeding season so we're you know in the month of January February so I just wipe that around the rim and then toss it down the hole and um, I don't like to use sheep's wool anymore. I just use some, some you know, uh, dirt clods. I've noticed that with sheep's wool, I've had, um, you know, birds or, or something pull out my sheep's wool and it's been laying on my um, trap pan. So, you know, could that be a deterrent or an issue? I, I believe so. But here's the finished set. Uh, just a few catches that I've 
you know, had through here. It was, I believe there was four coyotes caught off this property, around 20 coon, a bobcat. Um, so, pouring down rain, and I believe that was um, just a dirt hole, a trench set that caught on a pond dike. 